What's up everyone, welcome back to another video with the Millennial Finance. As I mentioned in the last video about my 2022 goals, one of it is to learn crypto and one of the things that I needed to find was a good exchange for me to buy and sell my crypto. With regulated exchanges like Luno in Malaysia only providing a limited amount of crypto for us to buy and sell, I needed to find another exchange, especially if I wanted to own some of the altcoins. Previously, I did use a bit of Binance, but with some of the regulatory issues that they're facing not just in Malaysia but around the world, we no longer really have the option, especially if you wanted to deposit Malaysian Ringgit into USD. Hobi has been one of the exchanges that I found to sort of meet my needs to buy and sell crypto, and I've been using them for a few weeks, so today I'll be doing a review about Hobi and whether you should use them. Let's get started. Cha-ching! So before we get started, if you want to sign up with Hobi, then use our link, we'll leave it down in the description below. It will get you 5% off all your trading fees using Hobi. One of the most important aspects when choosing a broker is the number of cryptos that they do support on the platform. So Luno, for example, in Malaysia, they support five different crypto. It's not enough for me, which is why we're talking about Hobi today. So according to CoinRanking, as of today, Hobi currently provides liquidity for 319 different cryptos, which is quite substantial. Based on my own experience over the last few weeks, they definitely do support most of the crypto that I was looking to buy. However, I definitely noticed that they didn't support some of the smaller tokens I wanted to buy, which I would consider, you know, higher risk, higher reward. If you're looking to buy some of the big names like, you know, Polkadot, Solana, Luna, and Matic, then yes, Hobi has all of that and even the meme ones like Shiba and Doge. At first, I was a bit disappointed that I couldn't buy some of the tokens I wanted to, you know, the really small ones. But after pondering over it for a few days, I realized that these coins are probably too high risk for me anyway. If you really wanted to buy some of these coins that are in a smaller market cap, then you can always just use Binance. They definitely have more coins listed than Hobi, and you can just transfer USDT from your Hobi account to Binance. In fact, I recently did this when I wanted to buy the Moonbeam token on GLMR. Hobi didn't have it listed yet because it's very new. Binance had it, so I just transferred USDT from my Hobi account to my Binance, and I just bought GLMR there. So next up, I'll be talking about the trading experience with Hobi. I haven't really used the mobile app to buy and sell crypto. I've been using primarily the desktop version. The trading interface though was pretty straightforward, although it could be a bit daunting, especially for newcomers. If you're used to stock exchanges low, maybe you use like, you know, Rakuten or interactive brokers, then it is pretty similar. You know, you have these charts, orders, and order book information. If you want to buy or sell, there's limit, there's market orders, and there's even stop loss. So yeah, nothing incredibly new here. It's just intuitive, easy to use. And in terms of fees as well, Hobi is pretty cheap at just 0.2%. Unlike Luno, they have the same fee regardless if you're a maker or a taker. This also means that you can buy crypto, you know, worth just $5 or $10 because the fee is entirely percentage based and there's no minimum amount. If you're a trader rather than an investor, then Hobi also has stuff like, you know, futures, leverage and margin and all of that. I didn't really dive too deep into it because that's not for me. I just buy and hold. Next up, we'll be talking about depositing and withdrawing from Hobi. If any of you use Binance before, then this is pretty similar. They have a pretty easy way for us to deposit our fiat and turn it into crypto. You'll see two options there to convert your fiat. I wouldn't really recommend going for the quick buy and sell because I think that those will have higher fees. To be honest, I don't even know how much the fees are because I didn't bother researching, but surely there is a cost to convenience. Instead, I use the P2P market, which is peer-to-peer, -peer, meaning I'm giving someone Malaysian Ringgit and they're giving me USDT in return. If you guys are not aware, USDT is a stable coin and its value will always be equals to $1, meaning you won't really change from Malaysian Ringgit to USD, but usually you'll change from Malaysian Ringgit to USDT. So what happens is there are people on the Huobi platform who will buy and sell USDT and exchange it for Malaysian Ringgit, and they'll make a small margin on top of it for providing this service to all of us. It can be a pretty scary process because you are not dealing with Hobi, I need to make that clear. You are dealing with a third party instead, but I do know that Hobi does do a lot of due diligence on these guys. You know, they have advanced security checks and a lot of them also have a security deposit of up to $2,000. What will happen is you will just decide how much USDT you wanted to buy. It will tell you how much Malaysian Ringgit that you need to transfer to them. And then there's some instructions there and basically just go to your online banking and transfer it to their bank account before they release the USDT to you. I've tried this many times. I've deposited you know, over $3,000, I think, and I've had no issues so far with any of the sellers. You can also directly deposit crypto into your Hobi account. Let's say you previously used Binance or you've wanted to transfer Bitcoin from Luno, then you can just do that on a Hobi platform itself. 
for withdrawals i haven't tried it yet meaning i haven't tried converting crypto into malaysian ringgit but it is the same process as buying it and i don't think there's any concerns here as well the main thing with regards to withdrawals for me we're not really withdrawing from you know usdt to malaysian ringgit but rather withdrawing the crypto that i bought on Huobi away to my wallets so the reason that this is important to me is because i don't actually hold a lot of my crypto on Huobi itself what I do is I will use them as a centralized exchange changing from let's say USDT to something like Luna and then I'll transfer it out to my Terra Station wallet or something like Metamask. So there are two reasons that I transfer my crypto out of Huobi. So the first one is that Huobi is still a centralized exchange meaning they are subject to regulatory issues. I'm not saying that it will happen but I'm just saying that it can and in any case if you have the option to have your crypto in your own wallet where no one can touch it then why not? Another reason that I do this is because I'm also exploring decentralized finance or DeFi and for me to explore it, I do need my money or my crypto out of my Huobi account and into my wallet. I'll do another video to detail this, how to do it, why you should do it in another video. So for example, I bought Luna using USDT that I got from Huobi and I bought it on Huobi itself. But right after, I transferred or withdrew all of it to my Terra Station wallet. If this is important to you and you want to do this as well, then ironically, Huobi is definitely a good choice in my opinion. They do support a lot of networks when trying to withdraw. And I also noticed because I did try Binance that Huobi has a lower network fee compared to Binance. Well, maybe it's not a network fee, but rather a withdrawal fee. But if you don't want to move your crypto to another wallet because that's too complicated and you want to keep it in Huobi, then that's fine as well because you'll have another option called Huobi Earn. So Huobi Earn lets you stake your crypto while you're holding it to earn some extra income while you're a long-term hodler. So that's one of the main benefits of crypto. Let's say if I buy Luna and I want to hold it for 10 years, instead of just waiting for price appreciation, I can also stake it at close to no risk and earn some extra Luna along the way. The rates on Huobi Earn are pretty okay and I found it to be pretty in line with what the networks are offering themselves. Currently, I use it for my Solana, Polkadot and Matic even though I just sold Solana yesterday but I did it for these three coins specifically because I didn't find it worth it to you know withdraw it out to another wallet and then stake because rates just weren't that high. Also, they have different options for staking. There's a flexible option meaning you can get it out whenever you want and there's a fixed term option meaning you have to stake for a certain amount of time like an FD. So I decided to do flexible option for all of it because I just wanted the option to you know unstick whenever I wanted in case I wanted to sell the coins. Apart from all of this I was talking about, Huobi has a lot of other cool stuff on the app which I think is pretty fun. One of the main draws is actually called Prime List which someone on Instagram told me about. Prime List is essentially a sale of new tokens and if you think about it from a stock perspective, this is kind of like a new coin trying to IPO. And basically with Hobby Prime List, you stand a chance to buy a new coin at its IPO price. The reason I say you stand a chance because it's not guaranteed. You have to do certain things depending on the coin. And if you're lucky, you'll get a slot and you can buy it at a low price. Based on past examples, most of these coins tend to shoot up um, from the listing price and it can give you really quick profits. However, I must say as usual that just because the coins in the past did this doesn't mean the coins in the future will do this. Regardless, I'm still going to give it a shot with future coins. I'm going to keep, you know, trying my luck to see if I can get it. The last one, I didn't get it and I saw that the coin went up a lot. But in any case, it's just, you know, 50 USD. So I don't mind if I lose a bit of it. Other than this, they also have frequent giveaways within the app that you can look out for. For example, currently they have this thing called Magic Miner, where if you complete some tasks every single day, you stand a chance to sort of spin a lucky draw. And that's how I got all my Shiba and Doge coins. You know, I've been doing this every day. I've got four Doge and 53,000 Shiba coins. Just from this, it's not worth a lot, but you know, free stuff is always fun. The grand prize for this is one Bitcoin and I'm actually waiting for the day that I'm gonna win it. If I do, I'll be sharing it with you guys for sure. They also, I think, just recently launched Hobi NFT and I got a free one just for signing up, but I don't think these will be valuable anyway. However, I do see that they have a marketplace, you know, you can buy and sell NFTs there, which is pretty cool if you wanna check that out. So if you're looking to buy coins other than, you know, the standard Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Litecoin, then Huobi is a good choice for many of us. For my Luno account, I still use it to hold all of my Bitcoin and Ethereum, so I don't have any of that on my Huobi one. If you just wanted to hold, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum, I would recommend you know, using Luno since it is regulated and I do hold all of my Bitcoin and Ethereum still there. I use Huobi mainly as an exchange just to buy coins, but I quickly transfer it out to my own wallet like I was talking about. 
and you know i don't really see it as somewhere i'm going to store all of my crypto for the long term if you don't want to do this though and you don't want to explore DeFi, they can always use something like hobby earn just to earn you some extra tokens so yeah if you want to sign up then use our link you'll get five percent of your trading fees for i don't know how long and it will also really help the channel thanks for watching this video to the end guys give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already see you guys in the next one peace out